Hello everyone and welcome back. Now if my voice does sound a little bit different, I do apologise. I've been crook for about a month now, so uh, finally hopefully starting to get over it. But um, anyway, today we're going to be talking about the weight of your patrol. Now obviously it's quite a big thing and something that gets talked about often. A bit of a big talking point for these cars as they are big and they are heavy. Let's have a bit of a talk about it and just, I suppose, open people's eyes to the actual weights that these cars might actually be sitting at that you might not even realize. My patrol, like I sort of talked about before, is pretty much like the standard package that um, most people would do to their patrols if they want to go away, camping, touring, towing a van, doing that sort of thing. Obviously there's a few changes and stuff that you know people make to sort of make the car suit um, their needs, but you know, this is pretty much what people would do. Stock these cars are about 2.8 tons, um, which is pretty heavy, but I mean, they are a big car and you know, it is what it is. Big car, big room, big weight. It's just the way that it goes. Now, obviously I've put a few things on the car. Um, so, you know, we're definitely going to be over that 2.8 tons. Now, recently, my father-in-law got his Y62 weighed. He's got a Series 5, just like me. Um, and he got his car weighed with his van just to check his weights and see where he's at, which is a really great idea and something that, um, you know, once you add a few mods and, or change a few things here and there that you should be looking at doing just to see where you're at. It's almost just like getting a blood test. It's nice to see where you're at, where you're sitting, where you need to improve things. Um, and, you know, you can sort of, foresee any issues that may arise moving into the future. It's just like getting your car weighed. It allows you to see where your weights are at, where they're positioned, where you may need to change things. And if you are wanting to tow a van, it allows you to sort of plan for what sort of van you can have, what sort of mods you may need to remove, or what things you may need to cut down on weight. So it's a super great idea just to give you a bit of an idea of where you are sitting and what you can and can't do. So after that, um, you know, his, his car weighed three tons on the dot um, with two, two passengers uh, and a full tank of fuel. And that was just the car. And he hasn't done anything to the car except change his springs. So he's got heavier duty springs, front and rear and airbags as well. So it was three tons on the nose when uh with two passengers and a full tank of fuel so i'm not quite sure where nissan got the 2.8 tons um i think when they do their weights or any manufacturers do weights of their vehicles it's not with a full tank of fuel and it's just with a driver and that's it so so there you go three tons so i thought geez if that was three tons i really must be close to the 3.5 ton um, weight limit of the car. I sort of, you know, roughly added up the weights of all the things that I've put on the car and um, sort of thought, geez, I must be like 3.4 tons or something with my family in the car. So I was a little bit concerned because I mean, you know, whilst you don't feel that sort of weight when you're in the car, certainly the fuel, fuel economy certainly says that it's heavy, um, but you don't really feel it whilst you're driving a car. It's surprisingly still feels very agile and certainly has enough power there to move itself along very easily. So I got a little bit concerned, went down to my local uh, Waybridge, which is a paid one. And if you are going to use the public Waybridge, make sure that it has been independently tested. Um, and if you can, try and find out when that was done so you know that it's gonna be um, as accurate as possible. So I went down to my local one um which which is quite a good one um it's good for it does a lot of things it'll do just cars trailers caravans uh trucks all that sort of stuff so it's quite a good multi-purpose way bridge and um i come in at 3.24 tons so it wasn't as bad as what i thought I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. Um, that was with my two kids in the back of the car with a full tank of fuel. Um, me as well, obviously. Um, but my wife wasn't in the car at the time. So you've, you know, sort of got to add on them weights um, to get the full picture. Um, and that's without the rear bar as well, 
which is going to hopefully be on the way. Apparently it's getting painted, so hopefully it's not too far off being delivered. So with those couple of things that will be in the car and on the car, um, you sort of got to add them on as well. So yeah, I'm looking at being very much on the weight limit of what the patrol is legally allowed to weigh which is 3.5 tons all in all i'd probably be i don't know what the rear bar is going to be weighing but you know i'll be close to that you know 3.3 tons um something like that we've got about 200 kilos there that we could spare which is pretty scary really because you know you don't i suppose you for me i wasn't really too concerned about the weights because i sort of thought cool i've i'm at 2.5 eight tons stock and if i add these things on you know i'll be looking about three tons which will give me 500 kilos to spare which i thought yep cool that's that'll be good but no wasn't the case when i found out that a stock patrol was three tons um yeah made me sort of think geez i might be in some trouble here and sure enough i am now whilst i do have a, a few hundred kilos spare you also need to consider your front and rear uh, axle capacities. So as you can see by the, the weigh ticket there, my axle group weights as well, which is really important and something to consider. The stock axle uh, rating for the patrol for the front and rear, the front is 1650 and the rear is 2030. Now my front axle weight was 1.68 tons so I'm over that by a little bit there uh, which isn't great but I do have plenty left on the rear now all this you know GVM and GCM and ATM and all that sort of stuff can be quite confusing especially when you know you weigh the car and you're like radio I know that I can only be 3.5 tons legally that's as heavy as I can be and then you weigh it and then you look at your axle weights and you realize oh I've got like 500 kilos on the rear but I'm over on the front and you're like oh yeah that well that's good I've got plenty of you know I've got plenty of spare weight that I can add to the rear um, but at the same time I'm nearly at my legal maximum weight of 3.5 tons so there's quite a lot that actually goes into weights and how it all works and you know remaining compliant and that sort of thing so it's um why i'm sort of stressing that it's so important to actually go and weigh your car and you know see where you're at because yeah i certainly didn't think i was going to be over on the front because i only added the bull bar um and that's it like i've only got the bull bar on there and it's already overweight on the front um obviously you know i've got the methods on the front there with the 35s so i mean the wheel and tire combo is going to add a bit of weight because they'll be heavier than the standard wheels um but probably not by a whole lot and i mean i've got the aerial on the on the bull bar there but it's not heavy uh and i didn't think the bull bar was that heavy either i mean i put that thing on myself and i didn't think it was heavy at all it was maybe i don't know 60 70 kilos perhaps at the time i lifted it on i didn't have the under splash trays on there and obviously didn't have to lift the recovery points the recovery points are quite heavy as well um so yeah surprisingly i'm overweight on the front uh, which is not a good thing you've gone and weighed your car and you found that you're overweight what do you do now well there's a couple of options you can obviously take your accessories off um, and go back to stock or you can get a GVM upgrade. Um, that's sort of your two options. Now for, so I'm gonna be looking at doing the GVM upgrade. Um, I'm currently going to be moving back down to Victoria soon. So yay, that's a great thing. And I will be getting a GVM upgrade done down in Victoria. Um, there's obviously not much point doing one here in Queensland because Australia is weird and their engineering certificates and rules and things apply to you know every state differently so if i got a gvm upgrade here it might not be recognized down in victoria so there's no point of doing it here now if i was to be pulled over and stopped and checked for my weight um i'd be fined because my front axle group is over its load capacity which is 
pretty scary because, I mean, there's probably a lot of patrol owners that are driving around with the same setup with no GVM upgrade um, and they're looking at the same thing. And what's even more worrying is people do all these mods to these cars like what I have, um, not really worried about their weights, got a caravan on the back and they're cruising around. Um, and of course, I mean, it's safe um, because the car is more than capable of doing it, um, but it's still illegal. Um, you know, they might be over on their rear, they might have a really heavy uh, tow wall weight, uh, they might have loaded up the back with all their gear and then all of a sudden that 500 extra kilos that you had spare is now taken up by all your gear, people in the back, fuel um, and that tow ball weight. Um, you know, it's, it really does quickly add up to um, be quite a lot of weight. So I'll be probably looking at a 4.2 tonne GVM um, which is, will be enough for me and what I want to do, I'll still be able to have um, enough sort of leeway throughout the car to pack it with gear and still be able to tow a van. Um, so that'll be fine enough for me. Um, that'll increase the front axle limit to 1780 or something like that, I think. Um, and there's a bit of an increase on the rear as well. Not that the rear is really my concern, because like I said, I've got you know, about 500 kilos spare on the rear, which, you know, a little bit of an increase there will just give me a bit of peace of mind to know that when I do load the rear with gear um, and I've got the van on with, you know, maybe 180 or 200 kilos of ball weight, something like that, that I'll still be all sweet, which is, uh, yeah, very great peace of mind to know that if you do get pulled over, you're gonna be all hunky-dory and not have to be stressing about that because it is happening more and more. It's becoming a uh, very common thing these days to see, you know, national transport, um, you know, set up on the side of the road and start weighing cars, caravans, trucks, all that sort of thing to ensure that people are doing the right thing. So, um, yeah, just go and weigh your car, go and see what it weighs and yeah, modify things if you have to or get a GVM. Uh, it's basically your, your only options. So for a 4.2 ton GVM upgrade, um, what do you need to do? Well, it's fairly straightforward, fairly easy sort of a process. Um, a majority of people are probably already halfway there. Fairly easy, it just needs to have heavy duty springs, uh, airbags, and um, upgraded upper and rear lower control arms. Front, upgraded front upper control arms is what I mean by that. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. I'm already halfway there. I just need to do the arms and then I'll be set just to get it engineered and um, she'll be on her way. You can't just chuck in any sort of heavy duty springs either if you are going to be doing a GVM upgrade. They do need to be rated. Um, so mine is, my front is 200 kilo constant, pretty sure, or it's 250, something like that. My rear is 300 constant. Um, that's pretty much where you want to be, um, just obviously so that it, so it can, you know, handle that sort of weight. If you've already done your lift, you're probably already halfway there. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either take it to a company that does the GVM upgrade and just gives you the engineer's certificate in-house, um, or you can just do the modifications yourself or either you know take you to a shop and get them to to do your springs and arms and then take it to an engineer to get the GVM upgrade done now don't think you can just go to any engineer and get it done some probably won't do it and um, you'll have to you know find someone specific that would happily sign off on that um, most likely would be one of the companies that deals with the 62s and um, does upgrades uh, for GVM and stuff like that. So there's a couple of options. Um, I'm going to be going with the, the latter option um, just because of where I'll be situated in Victoria. I won't be very close to Melbourne. I'll be doing, just getting a workshop to install the lower and upper control arms. And um, then I'll have to take it down to Melbourne to get it signed off by their engineer. If you are gonna you know, turn your 
car into a touring or towing rig, yeah, be mindful of your weights. I know a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people talk about it on social media and, you know, I'm not the only one, but I just thought I'd highlight that little point there because um, it's very important, you know, if you're not being cognizant of your weights, it can get very dangerous very quickly. Another couple of points I definitely want to stress is upgrade your brakes. Now, whilst the calipers on, um, on the patrols are excellent, they're really good. Upgrade your brake pads and your brake rotors. Once you start to get up, you know, into those heavier weights, you know, your stopping power decreases, especially if you put bigger tires on it. There's more rotational mass as that tire turns around uh, and your brakes have to work harder to slow that down. So definitely um, a must is to upgrade your rotors and pads to something that's more substantial um, and gives you a better stopping performance than over the stock ones. So for me, I want the DBAs front and rear. Um, I wanted to put the slotted rotors on the front, but I couldn't get any, so they're just a solid uh, face rotor. Obviously they're ventilated. Um, and the rears are the slotted ones. I'd certainly recommend a combination like that. I wouldn't go drilled. Don't go drilled rotors because they will crack eventually. Uh, and they're more for performance cars anyway. Uh, slotted rotors are perfectly fine enough. They just help to vent that gas that is created by the friction of the brake pads on the rotor. This allows for better cooling, better braking performance, and stops that, uh, that glazing and the, and the gas effect during heavy, heavy braking. So that's what I recommend. I also went the DBA brake pads as well. They're I think they're top performance ones or something, whatever their highest is in their performance range, that's what I went with. Um, and that's an excellent combo. This car stops on a dime, which uh, now knowing its weight is very surprising. So I would highly recommend doing that um, because that's the only thing that's stopping your car. And if you don't have good brakes, well. So let me know down below. Have you guys weighed your cars yet? Do you know what your weights are? Tell me what accessories you've put on your car and what it weighs. Be very interested to see what other people's weights are sitting at. Yeah, you guys know what I've done to the car and what it weighs now, so yeah. Let me know down below, what's your car weigh? Anyway guys, I hope that's a bit of good information and hopefully opens people's eyes to just how heavy these cars can get. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one.